boys and girls, Mrs. Serdekny here reading you The Secret Chicken Society by Judy Cox. Last time I read you chapters uh, three and four. So to recap, in chapter three, we were introduced to Daniel's neighbor, Mr. Graffalo's cat, who isn't a very nice cat. At school, Daniel was the first to hand in his permission slip to get a chick. 14 other kids also handed in their permission slips. Since there were only 12 eggs, Mrs. Lopez decided she would draw names for the number of chicks that hatches. Over the 21 days the chicks were in their eggs, they stayed in the incubator and had to be constantly turned. Daniel never lost his enthusiasm for the eggs. He helped Mrs. Lopez on weekends and was always visiting the incubator. Finally, the eggs hatched. Out of 12 eggs, only five hatched. Daniel named one Peepers. In chapter four, Daniel's family worked on making a garden in their backyard. The drawing also happened. At first, Daniel wasn't chosen, but many students couldn't take the chicks home after all. So in the end, Daniel got to take home all five chicks. So let's see what's going to happen in chapters five and six. Chapter five, why did the chicken cross the road? Five, mom, mom explained exclaimed. I said we could take one. It's a little hard to explain, Daniel began. Daniel put his box in the back porch. He lifted the cardboard flaps. The five chicks looked up at him with bright eyes. Just look at them, said dad. We couldn't leave them at school. They're so sweet. He pulled mom over. She put her hands on her hips. She wouldn't look into the box, but the other kids crowded around. I'm going to call mine Daffodil, said Kelsey. She picked up a fat, creamy chick with black legs. The chick had a little tuft of feathers on her head like a top knot. I thought you were going to name her Primrose, Daniel reached into the box. That's what I meant, said Kelsey. She stroked the chick. Primrose. Em Emmy held out her hands. Daniel handed her a puffy, pale yellow chick. My chick's name is Twinkie, she said. Give one to Tyler, too. Tyler peered into the box. The black chick stared fiercely back. Tyler stroked, stroked his chick with one finger, but he didn't pick her up. What are you going to name her? asked Kelsey. She still held Primrose. T-Rex, said Tyler. She looks tough, like a dinosaur. And birds are related to dinosaurs. But I don't want a chick. I'm giving mine to Emmy. She can have two. Goody, said Emmy, but I'm not calling her T-Rex. That's not a girl's name. Tyler grinned at her. No, that's the deal. T-Rex or you can't have her. Emmy shrugged. Better a chick called T-Rex than no chick at all. She picked her up. Now only two chicks were left in the box. This little one is Peeper, said Daniel. He carefully lifted the tiny chick with both hands. She's mine. There's one left, Emmy pointed out. The last chick was gray. Daniel scooped her up. He held her out to mom. No, said mom, putting her hands up towards to ward him off but she's so cute said Daniel mom shook her head no and no and no Daniel made his eyes big and pleading just hold her for a minute mom sighed one minute Daniel put the chick into mom's hands no she said but Daniel could see she was melting mom cuddled the fuzzy chick against her cheek oh she said she's so soft I can feel her heart beating let's call this one violet so that was that. Daniel winked at dad. Dad w winked at Daniel. Daniel grinned back. The chicks slept in the box on the porch for a few weeks. Daniel fed them every morning before school when he fed his other pets. And again, when he got home, he brought Jasper, Speedy, and Mr. Feathers out to meet his new pets, but the animals didn't seem interested in each other. On Saturdays, he cleaned the box and gave the chicks fresh straw that dad bought at the farm supply store. As the chicks grew bigger, Daniel had to change the straw every day. In a week, the box was too soggy and stinky to use. He got a new box and put the old one in the compost heap. This isn't working out, said Mom, holding her nose. We need a chicken coop. I know, said Dad. It's on my to-do list. But something always came up to keep him busy. In between working on his website and driving the kids to soccer practice and games, he cooked meals. He did housework. He weeded the garden. He helped out at Emmy's preschool. Somehow the chicken coop never got done. In the meantime, the chicks kept growing. Their wings, wing feathers grew, grew longer. Their legs got long and lanky. They had real tail feathers now. 
They looked like half-grown hens, but they still cheeped and peeped like chicks. By now the chicks recognized Daniel. They came when he called, peeping loudly. They liked to have their feathers stroked and would rub against his hand. On nice afternoons, Daniel, Kelsey, and Emmy took the chicks out. The chicks scratched for worms in the backyard. Every night, Daniel made sure they were safe in the brooder box on the back porch. One sunny afternoon, all the kids lay on their stomachs in the grass, watching Primrose, Violet, Twinkie, Peepers, and T-Rex scratch for bugs in the dirt. We should have a club, Kelsey said. A chicken club. You mean a sandwich? Joked Tyler. A chicken club sandwich? But no one else laughed. One morning, Daniel came out on the porch to feed them, but the box was empty. No chicks. His breath caught in his throat. Where could they be? He ran back inside. Emmy and Kelsey were still in their pajamas, arguing about what to eat for breakfast. Granola, said Kelsey. Flax flakes, said Emmy, grabbing the box. The chicks are gone, shouted Daniel. Help me find them. The kids ran outside, followed by Tyler, who had just awakened. What's going on? He asked sleepily. His hair stuck up in funny tufts all over his head. Daniel called back over his shoulder. The chicks are gone. Someone stealed them, said Emmy. Bad guys. Robbers, said, uh, said Kelsey. Chicken rustlers, said Tyler. Daniel didn't answer. He didn't think robbers would steal chickens, but where would they be? He padded across the dewy grass in his bare feet, scanning the yard. In the bushes, he saw a familiar orange shape, poison and the bad cat had a chick under his paws. Peepers! He ran towards the cat, waving his arms and yelling, Shoo! Scat! He clapped his hands hard, like Bomb did. Poison released Peepers and took off. He looked over his shoulder once, as if to say, I'll be back. Then he squeezed through a hole under the fence into his own yard. Daniel picked up Peepers. He held her close, stroking her feathers. They were soggy with cat spittle. Her heart fluttered under his hands. Daniel set her down and looked for the others. A soft peep, peep, peep came from behind the bushes. Daniel parted the leaves gently. The other four chicks huddled against the fence. Their eyes were wide and frightened. Quickly, he checked all the chicks. They're okay, he told the others. We got here just in time. Miller family to the rescue, said Tyler. Daniel one, poison zero. Chapter six, the great escape. In a few weeks, the chicks had grown into hens. Their fluff was completely gone. They had sleek, soft feathers. Their plump bodies balanced on skinny legs. Instead of peep peeping, they chucked, clucked softly. Twinkie's pure white feathers shone like marshmallow cream. Violet was the tallest. She had gray feathers and a delicate pink comb. Primrose was the most unusual. Her white feathers were long and silky. Her fluffy top knot looked like a feathered hat. T-Rex still had a fierce look, belaying her sweet nature. Her black and white feathers reminded Daniel of polka dots. Peepers was the littlest, but her comb was the largest. It crowned her head. She had long red wattles. In spite of her size, she seemed to be the ringleader. She liked to fly on the top of the hay bale and stand guard. At night, she heard the others into the coop. Daniel was proud of her. She's the boss, he told Kelsey. A few days later, Daniel took Peepers over to meet Mrs. Graffalo. He chose a time when Mr. Graffalo wasn't home. He didn't like to admit it, even to himself, but Mr. Gra Graffalo's fierce eyebrows always scared him a little bit. Mrs. G was delighted to meet Peepers. She held the chick on her lap like a cat. Peepers closed her eyes and clucked happily. Mrs. G and Daniel sat in rocking chairs on the front porch. Dot and Dash raced by. Their tongues hung out. Hung out. Their leases, leashes trailed behind them. Miss Clay ran after them, waving her cell phone. Her high heels were clack, clacking on the sidewalk. Come back, boys, she cried. She could put away her cell phone when she's walking her dog, said Daniel. Peepers didn't even flinch when the dogs ran past. She fluffed her feathers and settled down in Mrs. G's lap. He's a very sweet rooster, said Mrs. G. She stroked Peeper's soft feathers. Daniel laughed. No, Mrs. G, Peeper's is a hen. Mrs. G smiled. If you say so, dear. A week later, the chickens escaped again, but this time the Miller family didn't notice. Ding dong, the doorbell rang. Mom was working late at the hospital. 
Dad had ridden his bicycle to the co-op to buy organic vegetables for dinner. Tyler was in charge, but he was in his room listening to music and didn't hear the doorbell. Daniel had been playing with Jasper. He put the rat on his shoulder and answered the door. Mr. Graffalo stood at the doorstep. Rain steamed from his hat. His face was red. His fists were clenched. His eyebrows bristled. Where are your parents? He demanded. He didn't, eat, he didn't wait for an answer. Your chickens are running wild in my garden. Daniel nodded. He was too startled to speak. Jasper clutched his shoulder with a tiny claw. Kelsey and Emmy stood behind him. Emmy grabbed his shirt tail. Daniel found his voice. Sorry, Mr. Graffalo, he said. We'll come right over and get them. You'd better, growled Mr. Graffalo, before they ruin my flowers. Daniel put Jasper back in his tank. Then he and his sisters followed Mr. Graffalo into, the, into his yard next door. The sky was cloudy. It had stopped pouring, but the rain fell in a gentle mist. Primrose, Violet, Twinkie, and T-Rex strutted among the dripping flower bushes. They clucked softly and scratched for bugs in the mud. Peeper stood guard under a tall rose bush. Daniel looked around for poison, but he didn't see the, the big cat. Where was Mrs. Graffalo? Come to think of it, Daniel hadn't seen her for a while. Maybe she was on a trip. Get them out of here. They're tearing up my begonias, snapped Mr. Graffalo. Don't worry, said Daniel. We'll get them. They come home. They come when I call. He kept his hands around his mouth. Here, chick, chick. The chickens ignored him. I'll get Twinkie, said Emmy. Daniel tried to stop her, but she dashed into the soggy flower bed, stomping on several plants. Watch where you step, yelled Mr. Graffalo. Kelsey and Emmy chased the chickens through the flowers. They tried to be careful, but Emmy crushed the zinnias. Kelsey mashed the begonias. Daniel stood in the wet lawn. He called and called. Peepers cocked his eye at him, but edged away as he came closer. Daniel tiptoed closer. Peepers tiptoed away. At least Daniel was within reach. He dived and fell face first in the mud. Peepers slid out of his hands. He fluttered into the rose beds, cackling with glee. My prize roses, shouted Mr. Graffalo. His face was beet red. Finally, Daniel and his sister managed to herd the chickens to the fence. Maybe the chickens were tired. Maybe they decided the game was over. They stood as still as statues and let the kids scoop them up. Dratted chickens, complained Mr. Graffalo. Chickens are good for gardens, Daniel said, panting. He tucked Peepers under his arm. His glasses had fogged up from the rain, but he couldn't hold Peepers and dry them too. My dad says chickens eat bugs and their manure is good fertilizer. Maybe you could get some too. Mr. Graffalo folded his, folded his arms and glared. Chickens are noisy and smelly. They attract rodents. They spread disease. They lower the property values. They are a public nuisance and shouldn't be allowed in the city. Daniel just couldn't keep quiet any longer. They aren't a nuisance. Besides, keeping backyard chickens is legal. I know that, said Mr. Graffalo. I'm on the city council. The council passed it five to one, but I voted against it. Chickens are allowed. He paused and glared at, glared at peepers, but not roosters. Daniel sighed with relief. Well, that's okay then, he said, because we only have hens. Are you sure about that? asked Mr. Graffalo, watching them leave with narrowed eyes. He looked like just like his cat poison when he glared. Because if I hear one single crow, I'll call the police so fast it'll knock your socks off. Don't worry, muttered Daniel as they left. You won't. The kids carried the chickens home. Daniel's wet shoes made squelching sounds on the sidewalk. Mr. Gruffalo the buffalo, said Emmy when they were back in their own yard. Shh said Daniel, trying not to laugh. Dad came home as they put their birds back into their box. Daniel told him all about the great chicken escape. Dad scratched his head. He shoved his glasses up on his nose. He looked worried. First thing tomorrow, we'll build a chicken coop with a chicken run, said Dad. Chicken coop, asked Emmy. Hen house, said Kelsey. Hen hotel, said Daniel. He gently set peepers in the box. Nice. That's the end of chapters five and six. Stay tuned for another video on chapters seven and eight of the Secret Chicken Society. <laughs>